If you are struggling right now, or you are at the point where you feel like everything is saturated, I have good news for you because in today's conversation, I'll explain to you how to scale your coaching business in 10 easy steps. So here are the steps I really want you to pay attention to. Number one, I want you to invest in yourself and your business. This is really important, boss. If you want to scale your business, you have to invest in yourself. I'm talking about trying to revamp your skill set. Okay. I'm talking about taking classes yourself. I mean, you are a coach, but maybe you might want to reach out to other coaches to learn more about the subtleties of the business you're in. Okay. It means taking courses, attending workshops, or joining a professional organization. What are you doing on that front, boss? By investing in your own growth, you'll be better equipped to handle the challenges of scaling your business because your business is not going to scale by itself. Your business needs a strong hand and you are the one to provide that hand, okay? So you want to simultaneously invest in yourself, but also in your business. Like what I'm trying to say here is that if you have to think about branding, for example, do you need a website? Do you need to think about your logo? Those are little things you need to do. Your marketing, your email marketing, stuff like that, okay? And it's because the bottom line here is that you want to make your business look more attractive to potential clients. Do you need to actually get certified, for example, if you're a coach in a specific niche and that niche really uh, play like lends credibility to a professional certification, should you seek that certification? Maybe, who knows, maybe, all right? By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here, to have this sort of convos every now and then about important topics, okay? So number one, you want to invest in yourself and your business, okay? So by making a commitment to marketing and sales, you'll be able to attract more clients and grow your business at a sustainable pace. That's what you need anyway, sustainability, boss. The second second thing I want you to do is to use technology to automate certain tasks or processes. Don't try to do everything manually. You're going to kill yourself for nothing. I mean, it's very crazy. Imagine it's insane. You only have 24 hours in a day and you are going to like sleep to eight hours and maybe work eight hours and really maybe chill another eight hour eight hours. If you're going to do everything manually, it's going to be very it's going to be very difficult for you. Technology can be a powerful tool for scaling your coaching business. So by automating repetitive or time-consuming tasks, you'll be able to free up more time to focus on recruiting new clients and growing your business. I'm talking about apps. I'm talking about plugins. I'm talking about integrations. I'm talking about using software to automate certain tasks, okay? But I'm talking about the manual, the time-consuming tasks. No, here are the pro tips I really want you to pay attention to, boss. The third thing is you want to create a system for onboarding new clients. See, the whole thing here is that if you want to scale your coaching business or sell online courses, one of the most important things you can do is to create a system for onboarding new clients. See, the whole thing is an impeccable, a wonderful onboarding system should cover everything from initial contact, right, to set up the first meeting. You have to think about a few key elements such as an introduction to you and your business, an explanation of your coaching philosophy and approach, an overview of the services you offer, and a contract outlining the terms of your of your agreement. So by having a streamlined process in place, you'll be able to take on more clients without compromising the quality of your service. That's what you need anyway, okay? And this will help in, in our view, will help to ensure that your clients are getting the best possible experience from the start and they understand what to expect from working with you, okay? You want to actually instill clarity. You want to instill granularity in the process, okay? Transparency in the process, boss. This is what you need right now. Boss, let me quickly remind you the today's topic. I'm explaining to you how to scale your coaching business in 10 proven steps. So we are at number three. Number four, you want to charge what you are worth and do not be afraid to raise your rates over time. I mean, in this economy, you know, prices are going up like crazy. You know, I mean, you have uh, gas prices going up, food prices going up. How are you going to survive? You're not a charity, boss. You're not a charity. You are a coach. You need to monetize your expertise. You need to monetize your business model. And you have to find a way to actually charge for what you are worth. For example, if you take courses to gain a new certification, a new professional certification, you are you are entitled to charge in more. You are entitled to charge more. Yes, because... Your value goes up. That's why I just uh, I started to this conversation by telling you, you need to invest in yourself and your business. If you invest in yourself and your business, you're able to charge more because your value, you're adding more value, and your your net worth in terms of from a, a cognitive, from a, an intellectual perspective, your net worth goes up. 
okay and this is just automatic okay so you want to start by looking at your experience and expertise as well as the results you have been able to achieve for clients okay it's all about adding value if you're adding a lot of value it's it's worth it it's it's normal to charge more because the value you're adding will really offset the uh, the, the price you're charging The next thing I want you to do, but this is so critical. I want you to pay attention right now. I mean, I want you to drop everything, drop everything, drop everything, and listen to me. You want to optimize your sales strategy. First of all, do you have a sales strategy right now? Do you have a Do you have a way to uh, to uh, optimize your your strategy? Do you really know how to sell your services? I bet you didn't, or I bet you don't. It's important to understand that uh, because as a coach or as a as a course creator. You actually operate in the profession, like in the professional services industry. And mind you, this is a multi trillion dollar industry. Okay. And the market is expected to grow to more than seven trillion in three years. Three years, boss. Three years. So, with more and more companies competing for a slice of that pie, it's important to optimize your professional service offerings so that you can set yourself apart from the competition. That's what you need anyway. You need to actually differentiate yourself, boss. You need to differentiate yourself. What are you doing right now in terms of branding? Do you even have Do you even have a brain? Because the thing is, you are you just Jane, like John Doe or Jane Doe, or do you have a, a proper brain? Have you established yourself as a company? See, the whole thing is when we talk about actually differentiating yourself, you need to have an organization that backs you up. You need to have an organization, boss. You need to have a company, a legit company that actually. Uh, that provides the fulcrum, the operational fulcrum on which you can build your coaching business. Don't do this as a sole proprietor. Don't do this as a, as a solopreneur. Okay, no. If you right, if you right now, if you're listening to me and you are just like on the fence, I want you to really, really come in in the fray right now and and go and uh, establish yourself as a business, as a legit business. It doesn't matter if you're a single member LLC. It doesn't matter if you're one person. You can be a single member LLC. Even if you're one person, you can be a single member S corporation. The possibilities are there okay so the thing here is that if you if you want to uh, if you want to optimize your sales strategy it means what it means you need to establish yourself as a, as a brand you need to understand your target clients so you can deliver relevant information and address their needs you can you can resp- you need to respond to clients pain points to build a comprehensive strategic plan for tackling those issues you need to develop awareness of your strengths and weaknesses so that you are not over promising and under delivering very important so here is the approach i really want you to pay attention to and this is actually number six you need to set clear boundaries with your clients and you need to stick to them most this is so important and if you remember earlier i was just talking to you about the fact that you have a limited number of hours in the day and you need to strike the right balance between your private life, your professional life, and your personal life. You, 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 you need to breathe. Okay, you need to have room for breathing. You need to really chill also. So when you're running a coaching business, it's important to set clear boundaries with your clients. Okay, let me give you an example. You may want to set a limit on the number of phone calls or emails you will respond to outside of scheduled sessions. Because remember, the, the, the bottom line here is you need to have a life. You need to strike the right equilibrium between work and life, okay? So it's important to set those boundaries. So once you have set those boundaries though, be sure to stick to them. Your clients will respect you for doing so and it will help them, it will help to build trust between you. Also, it's important to be clear about your fee structure and what payment methods you accept, okay? Again, you're not a charity, you are a business and I want you to think, I want you to start thinking that way. If you want to scale your coaching business, you need to start thinking of yourself, not just as a regular coach, but as a, as a, as a business, as a brain. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're one person, if you're a one person operation or a 10 person operation, you are a brain. Okay. And what, what I want to do here is that you want to really, uh, find a way to uh, serve your clients while also serving yourself. Because if you try to do too much for your clients, you will quickly become overwhelmed and bogged down in work. This is a marathon, boss. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. So you got to pace yourself. So if you're able to set clear boundaries, you can ensure that you will be able to provide the best possible service to your clients 
while still scaling your business, while still having an opportunity to breathe, to breathe also, boss, okay? Let me re remind you of today's topic. I'm still having a conversation with you about how to scale your coaching business in 10 proven steps. 10 proven steps. The reason why I'm just contextualizing the conversation is because I want you to be clear about what we're talking about, okay? So I spoke to you about the fact that you need to invest in yourself and your business, use technology to automate certain tasks, create a system for onboarding new clients, charge what you're worth and don't, do not be afraid to actually ask for more, optimize your sales strategy, set clear boundaries with your clients and stick to them. Let's talk about number seven. You need to choose a scalable business model, a scalable coaching business model. This is really kind of critical. Why? Because once you have you have identified what kind of scalable business model is right for your company, you need to start thinking about the options available to you, such as maybe you can launch, who knows, a membership website, or you can have a, a community, a, a private community. You can create an online course. You can have a one-on-one -on -one coach or a coaching session. It can be a group session or individual coaching session. It really depends. The uh, the details, you, you're going to have to work them out based on your target audience, but, but also based on your specific skills, the skills that you are bringing to the table, okay? Every coach is different. So coach, you, boss, you are listening to me right now. Your skills must match whatever you are proposing, okay? A membership site is one popular scalable business model for online coaches and consultants. This model gives, num gives members exclusive access to training resources and other tools for a low monthly fee. And since your time is spent creating and coordinating, coordinating scheduled, co scheduled content, it is uh, easy to scale this type of business. All right. And while it is impossible to avoid all operational growing pains as you scale your business, there are some key areas where you can improve your processes now to speed up and smooth out the process later. Okay. And one thing I want to say right off the bat is that it's really essential to reflect on the growth. Like you need to think about the kind of growth you want to have. Because see, the whole thing is if you want to have an aggressive growth, then you got to be ready to actually work harder. Okay. And it's also, it's also important to always uh, motivate yourself by thinking of where you were five years ago, where you were one year ago, where you were two years ago, and where you are now. See, do you see progress? I see progress. I don't see a decline. I see, I see an up, an upward trajectory. So I want you to really stick to that. So, you know, don't let, uh, don't let that spirit die because you have achieved some level of success already. So you want to turn your attention outward and expand your business in a way that suits your new size and goals. Okay. So keeping, uh, keeping those elements in your head will help you actually stay motivated and stay dedicated. And you need that. You need you need consistency. You need commitment. You need a, the, you need a mindset of being content all the time. Here is a review I really want you to do right now in terms of uh, number eight. Number eight, you need to review operations and spending. See, the thing is, if you want to grow real fast. You need to start thinking about your current operation, your back office, your front office, your middle office, right? You want to implement operations management in your business right now to ensure that all the processes work together, primarily meeting customer needs, right? So you want to analyze your current business processes so you can get a valuable business baseline of information to make informed decisions about where to make improvements. W what is baseline? Baseline means, you know, you start at point zero, okay? So it's important. You have to think about budgeting approaches okay you can go top down or you can do bottom up it really depends on you you have to really and again all i'm telling you i don't want you to spend a lot of time on this it might sound a little a little complex but it's not you can use software to map out everything you can map out your work streams you know like how do you add value in your business and you can actually find bottlenecks you can find ways of improvement areas of improvement in your operation using software okay you don't have to do this manually but what i'm trying to say here is that you need to review a, your operations and spending you need to do like you can use quickbooks or other uh, accounting software like uh, wave or uh, expensify or zoho books or fresh books to see your uh, your uh, your variances like your actual versus uh, expected expenses that way you know exactly if you're overspending or underspending and you can take actions accordingly number nine i want you to revamp marketing efforts 
So you need to really pay attention to your marketing efforts, okay? You want you need to let more people know you beyond your current audience, okay? It's all about really drawing, drawing, like using the powers of online marketing, social media, client testimonials, and uh, business partnerships to take your company to the next level without having to spend a lot of money or put yourself at risk, okay? And a very easy to, easy way to do this is to use uh, CPC campaigns like search engine marketing, for example. You can do Facebook advertising. You can do Google advertising. You can do YouTube advertising. That's uh, that, that's ads, but you can also have SEM. You can have an SEM strategy. SEM stands for search engine marketing. That that's the that's what you do when you actually uh, you, when you pay Google, for example, to actually display your uh, your your ads when people search for the keywords you are targeting. Okay, and this is this works fantastically because it's very cheap. But it's very scalable. It's a great way to uh, draw organic traffic to your website or to your content overall. So this is fantastic, okay? And what I want to say here is that when we talk about revamping marketing efforts, it's an un it's very ongoing. You can't just do it and just forget about it. You have to keep doing it, okay? And make sure that you use your website. Your website should be uh, an important element in your marketing efforts in addition to social media platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And also the platform on which you are. This could be Kajabi, this could be Podia, this could be uh, Teachable, this could be uh, Thinkific, this could be a New Zealand, whatever you are. Use the, use the, what I, the, kind of, uh, the kinds of uh, capabilities you have on the platform where you're currently hosting your, uh, your content. Okay, here is a winner for you, and here is number one, number ten rather. Number ten, you want to fight. You want to not to fight, <laughs> not to fight. You need to find the right employees. If you remember, if you remember earlier, I was just telling, I was just telling you that you got to start thinking as a business, right? I don't care if you are a one-person operation right now or you are a ten-person operation. You got to think as a business. You got to think in terms of branding. What do you see yourself in one year? What do you see yourself in five years? What do you see for your coaching business in 10 years? This is the kind of a brainstorming sessions I want you to really start thinking about. And part of that will be to find the right employees because if, if for, for instance, you want to be at, uh, at a certain point in one year, one year from now, and you realize you don't have the current resources, the current human resources to, to reach that point, then we have a delta, we have a gap, right? And to sort of fill that chasm, you need to hire the right people. And so you need to pay attention to what kind of skill set you want to have on your team. What kind of skill set do you currently have? Okay. Now, employees often see problems or inefficiencies that management may overlook. So empowering all employees to improve their jobs and reduce unnecessary or redundant work improves their jobs, the bottom line and morale. So trying to find the right employees and empower them. And you want to evaluate how many employees in different departments are doing manual work. Are there ways in which technology could, could automate some of those processes? Okay. For example, could accounting software handle certain functions automatically instead of requiring everyone to enter all, all the data? Okay. Build a team of support professionals who can help you grow your business. That, that's the bottom line for me. The bottom line here is that you want to, if you want to scale your uh, coaching business, one of the best ways to do this is to build a team of support professionals. So those are people who can help you out with day to day tasks associated with running your business, such as marketing, client management, and bookkeeping. So having a team in place will free up your time so you can focus on growing your business. Also, it would allow you to offer a more personalized service to your clients as you will have more time to work with them on one-on-one. -on -one, okay? In addition, a strong team can provide valuable insights and feedback that can help you refine your business model and make more informed decisions. Okay, As your business grows, it's important to keep expanding your team in order to maintain a high level of quality and service. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just explaining to you how to scale your coaching business in 10 proven steps. Okay. So I gave you the steps. We, we had uh, some conversation about the pro tips, the approach, the review, and the winner. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you more. I'll see you in the future. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>